Hello and welcome to our lesson about the game mechanics and the advanced rules that govern them. This module is packed with information about all kinds of interactions and covers a very broad range of topics and we'll talk about the details of keywords, action sequences and the phases within them and how to know the order in which different interactions occur. This will help you plan your turns better and avoid many common mistakes. Keywords are the names of abilities, such as charge or battle cry, written in bold font on many cards. Many of them are self-explanatory and don't require any additional analysis. However, there are some exceptions and peculiarities that might not be obvious, and being aware of the exact way in which these mechanics work will help you better anticipate what's going to happen after you make your play. The game will display information about a few of those interactions, such as the combination of stealth and taunt on the same minion, where stealth takes the priority, and as long as the minion is hidden, the taunt is inactive. However, the game doesn't make it perfectly clear how stealth itself works. A minion will lose stealth not only when it attacks, but also when it deals damage through any ability, such as knife juggler throwing a knife after you summon a minion, or wild pyromancer damaging minions after you cast a spell. In fact, if you play a wild pyromancer and then give it stealth with a spell like conceal, the ability will trigger afterwards and immediately unstealth the minion. For the sake of consistency and clarity, Hearthstone tends to use very literal language when describing mechanics and interactions. It tries to leave as little room for interpretation as possible. There are occasional irregularities, but for the most part, all text on cards is very deliberate. An example of that would be the difference between damaging and destroying a minion. Destroying a minion can be done with a card or an effect that specifically uses a word destroy on it, such as deadly shot, shadow word pain and so on. The act of destroying a minion will also not trigger any effects which would require it to be damaged. That's why if you use shadow word pain on an acolyte of pain, it will not draw any cards. Dealing damage must necessarily leave the minion damaged, which is indicated by the red color of its health value, or killed if it had less health than it took damage. This means that, for example, destroying Divine Shield will not count for the purpose of mechanics interacting with dealing damage. So if you have a Frothing Berserker on the board and two Argent Squires trade with each other, destroying the Divine Shields, the Berserker will gain no attack. However, when they trade next turn and kill each other off by dealing one damage apiece, the Berserker will gain the expected two attack. Divine Shield removal not counting as damage dealt is also relevant to another mechanic which relies on directly damaging the target, and that is the poisonous keyword. In order for poison to work, the condition of dealing damage has to be met, which means that a poisonous minion hitting a divine shield or trading after being reduced to zero attack with something like pint-sized potion will actually not trigger and will not destroy the target if it doesn't damage it. It is worth noting that poisonous minions will destroy all targets they damage with their abilities as well. Bringing this back to our first example, let's now attack the Acolyte of Pain with Emperor Cobra. The Acolyte will take two damage initially and draw a card, and then the poisonous ability will destroy it, but no more cards will be drawn since destroying the minion does not count as damage dealt. Freeze mechanic might also require a short clarification. In general, frozen minion will miss their next possible attack, and this condition is easy to understand when you freeze your opponent's minion, because it will simply stay frozen during your opponent's next turn and miss that one turn of being able to attack. But it does become more tricky when you freeze your own minions. For example, when playing Hildnir Frostrider, if your minion already attacked or still has the summoning sickness and cannot attack anyway, then whenever you freeze it, it will stay frozen until the end of your next turn, which means that it cannot attack on your next turn. However, if that minion can attack, but hasn't done it yet, you can choose to freeze it and skip that immediate opportunity to attack. In that case, it will unfreeze as soon as you end the turn on which you froze it. 